John has his own podcast that he puts out around the political world with John Rothman. Thank you, my friend, for always coming on with us. May I say it is always a pleasure. I love listening to you on KCBS. Oh, it's yes. It's even a greater delight to see you. In uh, thank you, my friend. Okay, so let's get into this. Right now, uh, I had to click off of it, but CNN is carrying the live hearing regarding this conflict of interest with Bonnie Willis. She's not, at least the last headline I read, expected to get back on the stand. She did yesterday because she was all angry. John, bring us up to speed about this case and just your thoughts on how you think this is going to go. The issue is not District Attorney Willis. Uh, whether she had a romance with a co-worker or not is of no consequence. The issue is, did Donald Trump try to interfere in the Georgia election? And that's got to be the focus, and that's yep. my concern, and that should be all of our concern. The rest of it is a distraction. So uh, I don't know what the outcome will be. I, I believe, based on what I've heard, but she will not be removed from the case. Donald Trump will be held accountable in Georgia. And given the uh, Raffensperger uh, uh, discussion, which was taped, uh, he's clearly guilty. Yeah. So let let this play out. Uh, and uh, by the way, I found uh, District Attorney Willis very compelling yesterday and legitimately angry. And I, I, uh, I have great respect for her. So yeah, I, I mean, she was, well, uh, there was one point where one of her friends had come on and said the romantic relationship had started earlier, but the whole time I was watching it, John, I kept thinking it's just a delay tactic. Everybody knows. And, and let me just play a quick clip just to kind of what you were just talking about. She's not a happy woman being on this stand and being accused of what she's being accused of. Here's Fonnie Willis. Well, no, no, no. Look, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So my question was, do you have any I object to getting any personal records of mine? We're not dealing with privilege through a witness. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dealing with privilege. What so you can just see her right there, John. She's not, and she's not a fool. Um, there was another point about the fact that, you know, that she needed uh, Wade and that she needed his money. And she basically said, she's like, the last man that I've ever needed money from was my father when he took care of me. My daddy. Exactly, said. my daddy. And, and she, very strong. And I think that that scares uh, Trump uh, because he knows that he cannot intimidate her. And this case is extremely strong in my humble opinion. So. It's strong, and I believe in the end, justice will prevail, and it will be proven that Donald Trump tried to interfere in the election in Georgia. By the way, it's not just this court that's considering it. Mr. Smith in Washington is also dealing with election interference, which includes Georgia. So Donald Trump is, is stuck. Not only that, now he's going to have to sit in a courtroom, yeah. uh, and uh, he's not going to be able to campaign. And here he is, still protesting that he should have immunity. Yeah. Rubbish, I say. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a case which should go to the Supreme Court. No president should have immunity. You know, it's President's Day uh, on uh, on Monday, my favorite day of the year, if you will. <laughs> and uh, to think that the American presidency is reduced to this is just uh, tragic. Uh, let me also point out while I'm doing this that the death of Mr. Navalny, yes. which I heard very early this morning, uh, I think about midnight, uh, a little later our time, uh, and uh, the fact that the president, while you are on the air, while I'm talking to you, I believe Joe Biden is going to speak to the nation about it, is the ultimate tragedy. Can you imagine Navalny, who we've all watched, we've watched him on MSNBC, we've watched him on CNN, we've watched him on CBS, uh, I think we even watched him on Fox. He has been everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, the simple truth is that this man is a victim of a brutal, repressive uh, Vladimir Putin. And the, it's too late now to save his life. But let us hope that his legacy of speaking out for freedom is one that is remembered. He has a daughter, by the way, who goes to school here in California. Hmm. Uh, I haven't heard her interviewed yet this morning. I guess it's too raw, too new. Oh, absolutely. But uh, this, is, uh, this is the ultimate tragedy. And it's our impotence. That's the thing. It's the impotence. When you see an injustice and not be able to stop it, uh, it, it it's a real, uh, real tragedy. Uh, Trump appointed judge, <clears throat> pardon me, John, has denied Trump's motion to delay the deadlines in that documents case. Uh, also today, or actually yesterday, a hearing was set March 5th for the hush money case. 
And as I, I, as I had mentioned earlier, Trump will also learn today or is expected to learn today how much he has to pay in penalties for the civil fraud trial in yep, it, New This York. is a disaster for Donald Trump. This is, <laughs> and, and deservedly so. Uh, let me quickly uh, tell you that the fact that he is going to be held accountable, have to be in a courtroom, is something that is critical. Uh, the fact that uh, the hush money case uh, is uh, going to play out is, is very important. The fact that, uh, that all of these stars, if you will, are aligning uh, mm. make it critical. But you know what bothers me? Oh. I talk to Trump people all the time. People email me. I don't know why you punish yourself, John. You punish yourself. No, you know something? It's the way I learn. Yeah, I that's learn true. when I hear the opposition. When we were on KGO, Nikki, I always listened respectfully mm -hmm. uh, to the uh, Trump supporters. Uh, I argued with them, but I always knew they had a voice. What's tragic is Trump supporters that I've been talking to don't see it. They see it as a conspiracy. Right. Well, talk about a conspiracy. It turns out the impeachment of Joe Biden is Thank based you. on a falsehood, a lie. And do you think that that was covered on Fox? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Uh, they intend to proceed as if Joe Biden is the crook they believe him to be. The fascinating thing, and I really, I really listen because to me, the media today is in a sense a window on the world. Uh, I listen to this trial taking place in Georgia hmm. or to the question of hush money or what's going to happen today when Donald Trump is going to get his comeuppance on corrupt business practices. And by the way, he's guilty. There's no... This is not a matter of, of right. whether he's guilty or innocent. This is only a matter of a penalty. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope he gets everything he deserves. But here's the question for all of us. Will Trump voters, will Trump supporters understand no. the corruption of this man? And, and that to me is, is uh, the critical question because there has to be a reckoning with Republican voters who, by the way, fascinating. I heard a poll today. One third of Republican voters believe in that Taylor Swift conspiracy theory from uh, the Super Bowl. Can you believe it? Well, I guess I should believe it exactly. because uh, it's 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 like the QAnon stuff. It just keeps going. Well, I mean, you can always if you believe in anything that Trump says, then you'll just believe anything they tell you. And I've already heard it uh, regarding, you know, the the FBI informant that lied about the Biden case. Um They'll say, oh, the deep state got to him. I mean, they will literally create whatever narrative they need to, even if it contradicts things they already believed, simply because the truth is too hard for them to accept. The truth is no. too hard that this guy's been conning them from the very beginning. And what are they going to do today when in New York uh, Trump is fined for mm -hmm. his business practices? Remember, the man. And it could be a lot of money, John. Well, they're talking over $300 million. Exactly. Possibly. But it also has to do with whether Trump will be licensed to still do business in New York, whether his sons, Eric and Donald Jr., will be suspended in terms of their ability to practice in New York. There are so many implications here. And how do you dismiss it? You know what they say? This is all the Biden Justice Department. Exactly. Biden is after him. And, and you have to understand, most of these cases have nothing to do with the federal government. No. They have to do with state governments. In New York, the question of his business practices has to do with his business practices. It doesn't even have to do with politics. Exactly. But years ago, some of you will remember when we were on KGO, I played the theme music from Elmer Gantry, hmm. uh, the great movie starring Burt Lancaster, which uh, is about a flim-flam artist. Donald Trump is a flim-flam artist. And may I make another comment? Uh, we are now facing the death of Navalny. Yeah. But more than that, we are facing the fact that Donald Trump is saying if he is elected president of the United States, he's going to withdraw from NATO. Yes. And, you know, he can't do it legally because Congress passed a law. Congress would have to terminate it. But he can make life difficult for our allies. Our allies are plotting over the question of Donald Trump being president of the United States. Can you imagine a former president of the United States giving a green light to Russia I know. to go after our allies in Eastern and Western Europe? Can you imagine that? Now, I was fascinated to hear one member of Congress say this is treason, and it is. It is absolutely absurd, and that in itself should be the reason why Republicans who still have time 
to choose someone else. One other comment. I just have to say this because uh, we've just gone through Valentine's Day and I know how much you love your husband. And I do. Kim loves her husband and I love my wife. I constantly remind her of that. <laughs> but the, 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 the question of attacking Nikki Haley. I know. For her husband serving overseas, he's a member of the South Carolina National Guard. He is uh, uh, stationed in the Horn of Africa. He is a genuine American patriot. But that shouldn't stop Donald Trump. Remember when he took apart John McCain? You yep. know, I used to see John McCain. He'd come into the studios at KGO because he was a good friend of Ron Owens. And uh, and uh, he would. And I always enjoyed seeing him and hearing his comments. I don't. I never voted for him for president. Wouldn't have voted for him for president. But uh, by the way, he chose Sarah Palin as his vice presidential running mate. The most absurd choice I think in American of history. But but John McCain was a patriot, yeah. and he was a hero. And how Donald Trump got away with attacking him, and now Nikki Haley's husband, mm -hmm. he has no conscience. Nope. He has no sense. And I know there are some including my good friend Rob from Richmond, who listens to you devotedly, as he does to uh, Mark Thompson, and who is a, an absolutely devoted to Donald Trump. And my answer is, smell the roses, for God's sake. Yeah. Can you imagine a candidate for president of the United States who's about to face a remarkably heavy fine, a man who is attacking his opponent's husband because he's serving in the military? I, I mean, it is, it is beyond my comprehension. But Here's the real challenge. The real challenge now is that this impeachment business against Joe Biden is clearly out the window. And this whole question of impeaching Mayorkas by one vote, by one vote, and they're going to stick to it. By God, they're of going course to they are. Of course they are. This is a shame. Hmm. Nikki, I've told you before, I was a Republican. If I turned my camera just a little bit over here, you would see a whole section of my library on the Republican Party. I have been called a scholar of modern republicanism, a historian of the Republican Party. Uh, when people ask for commentary on Republican issues, I very often get the calls from the national media. This is not the Republican Party. What it is, is what Donald Trump Jr. has said. The Republican Party is dead. He said this on the ellipse on January 6th. He said, it's now the party of Donald Trump. Yep. Well, we shouldn't have in this country one person political parties. And uh, the Republican Party is going to have to go through uh, like any addict, it's going to have to go through a period of recovery. Yeah. And we can only hope that they get their balance back. Uh, enough of my diatribe. Well, I, 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 I like that you say that, though, because, John, I would, say, I, I would say that the most current example of how the Republican Party is without its own platform, is only going to follow in whatever Donald Trump says, is, of course, that bipartisan border bill. Is that going to wake up any Republican lawmaker saying, wow, this bill did more for border security than we've seen in decades, and we let it go because Trump didn't want us to pass it because it would give Biden a win, and then he couldn't use the border as a political issue to run on. I mean, the Republican Party has proven to be so ineffectual that literally had in their hands something they have been asking for and they still turned it away because of their dear leader i just don't understand it well that's what a cult is yeah. and they're afraid and you know the person who was severely damaged is mitch mcconnell and i'm no defender of mitch mcconnell Ugh, yeah. but here is a guy who really staked everything else you know it, it, it is an, the ultimate tragedy that uh, the republican party doesn't get it and this is uh, something that hurts the united states of america so we'll have to see how it all plays out. I, the South Carolina uh, primary is next week. And uh, so we'll have a session together before the South yeah. Carolina primary. But uh, it will be very interesting for me to see how Nikki Haley does in <sighs> the state of South Carolina. But it would appear, unless something dramatic happens, and I think all these court proceedings may make a difference, that, uh, that Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee. And you know what no one else is talking about, Nikki, and I just want to mention it to you. Please. If you were an insurance agent and you looked at an actuary cable and you had two uh, candidates for president in their 80s or one approaching 80, what is their life expectancy on that actuary table? It, it's not very, very good. low, very so low. The question becomes, who will be the vice presidential nominee for Donald Trump? We know that Kamala Harris will be the nominee for vice president with uh, Joe Biden. And the right-wing media keeps blasting her and blasting her. And by the way, a lot of what they say is complete 
Uh, oh, yeah. It's still nonsense. Yes. But, it doesn't matter but, at all. They just don't like her because she's a woman and she's a woman of color. Let me tell you, I was the first radio talk show host in this country to interview Kamala Harris on KGO uh, when she wasn't an elected public official. She was simply uh, someone in San Francisco who was advocating uh, on a particular issue dealing with the, the sex slave trade among younger women. Uh, I was impressed by her then. I am impressed by her now. And uh, the ridicule that is heaped on her is unjustified. Yeah, absolutely. The best historical example I can come up with is the ridicule heaped on Harry Truman. You know what they used to say about Harry Truman? Hmm. The heir is Truman. Ah, that's uh, right. They, they, he was called the senator from Pendergast because uh, he got there because a boss put him in the position. Um, Harry Truman proved to be a great president. I don't know whether Kamala Harris will be a good president or a bad president, but the odds are what you do with every president, what we can talk about next week or during President's Day, which I will do on my own podcast, is how you judge a president. And so uh, I only wanted to throw that out because we better start thinking about the fact that this will be an important election in terms of the future. Yeah. And who Trump chooses for vice president will be a good indication. You mentioned, by the way, earlier, Tucker Carlson, who yeah. is not a journalist at all. Right. Uh, he's a hack. But I will tell you that uh, Donald Trump had lists Tucker Carlson as a potential candidate for vice president. He's said it publicly. <laughs> I just, you know, we should only be so lucky that he should choose Tucker Carlson. <sighs> uh, but then again, I have to tell you, I listened to Elise Stefanik, who is the number three Republican in the House of Representatives and who is really wants to be vice president and was asked the question, if she had been vice president instead of Mike Pence, how would she have ruled uh, about the Electoral College vote? And she said she would have sided with, with Donald oh, yeah. Trump. So, yeah. Do you want that kind of person as vice president of the no. United States? Absolutely not. Absolutely so not. These are things, all of which we are going to have to deal with. We're going to try to deal with it as effectively as we can. Uh, and uh, and but it goes to show you how important it is uh, who we choose for president and who we choose for vice president. Well, and, and fingers crossed, John, that we don't have Trump as even an option because of the court cases that he's facing. But, you know, being the presumptive nominee, you know, unfortunately, it does look that way. I hope Nikki Haley doesn't suspend her campaign or drop out or anything yeah, like that. Something. What happens if this afternoon? Uh -huh. I can't wait. I, 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 you know, my afternoon nap is out the window because <laughs> I've got to find out what happens. If he is fined three hundred million dollars, uh, what's he going to do? He's going to ask everybody else to pay for it, John. That's what he's going to do. He's going to send out a campaign mailer, and everyone else is going to pay that fine. Ladies That's what's going to happen. If you're going to give money to anything, it should be to Nikki Maduro's there you go. program, <laughs> or Mark Thompson's program, exactly, or Kim McAllister's program, uh, and uh, not and, Donald uh, Trump. No, no, of course not. Uh, and you can't trump that. <laughs> but um, but 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 that's exactly what's going to happen, John. He he campaigns on his legal troubles, and other people pay the fines. I mean, that's a a big fine. I don't know, you know, how quickly he'd be able to do it. But Trump has that name Teflon Don for a reason. And I don't know if the Teflon is wearing out. I hope it is. Uh, but again, like you, uh, we'll have to wait and see yeah, what happens. I, I know we're running out of time, but I, I do want to make this really clear. I would say perfectly clear, but it recalls my days with Richard Nixon. <laughs> there are still people who believe that Nixon was brought down by the deep state. Yeah. I urge you to listen to Richard Nixon's own words in his interview with David Frost, where he says he impeached himself. He did it to himself. He handed his opponents uh, the ability to do him in. Nixon was at least intellectually and politically honest. Donald Trump is Isn't neither it? intellectually nor politically honest. And by the way, I do want you to know, I know the difference between Nikki Maduro and Kim McAllister. <laughs> uh, unlike Donald Trump, who yeah. does not know the difference between Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi. Exactly. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you, you can only make up. There will be books written about it. In fact, Nikki, I'm going to make a date with you in, in 20 years. You and I are <laughs> going to sit and talk about this stuff, and we're not going to believe what we have been through. Uh, I am <sighs> waiting now, and when we're finished, to listen to what uh, the president has to say about uh, the death Levalde. of Navalny. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do want to indicate to you, and some of you will recall, uh, on my program on KGO, I spent a lot of time on that. And if Karen Reed, our former producer at KGO, is listening, she was really the instigator early on 
on the Navalny question. She was the one who said, John, you have to talk about it. And I, I said something that I now regret. I said, I'm not sure our audience is interested in foreign policy. Uh, it was a tremendous underestimation on my yeah. part of the significance of foreign policy. And I will not ever make that mistake again. And Karen Reed, if you're listening, thank you for reminding me then. And I'm glad to remind everybody now, the death of Navalny, and we are going to hear, I, th I think CNN is going to replay the special they did. 60 Minutes may replay yes. their interview. Listen to it. Not that he was always right. Not that he was, uh, he has become a martyr yes. in the cause of human freedom. And I was drawing the analogy. This is the Russia of Stalin uh, took care of Raoul Wallenberg, the great Swedish diplomat who was arrested at the end of World War II sent to the gulag and perished there after saving the lives of tens of thousands of Jews. Uh, and, and the world could do nothing for Wallenberg except mourn him. But we in the United States did something special. We made him an honorary U.S. citizen. And I would suggest that there should be an initiative in Congress, too little too late, to make Navalny an honorary U.S. citizen as well. Hmm. We should honor him in death. We weren't able to save his life but maybe we can make his legacy mean something. So that is my suggestion for the morning. Hmm. John Rothman, Around the Political World with John Rothman is a very quick, short podcast, but it's loaded with political information. He is the expert. He joins us every Friday with a political roundup. And I appreciate you so, so very much for coming on with us, John. Your insight is invaluable. And uh, we'll talk again next week. Good. And may I urge people, do support the Nikki Maduro program. Uh, they'll flash on the screen in a moment how you can do that. But if you want these kinds of independent voices, Nikki, Mark, Kim, myself, although I, I, I'm still a freebie, <laughs> I want you to know that your support is critical. I don't say this lightly. We don't have a radio talk radio station in San Francisco, unbelievably in the fourth largest media market in the country, but we do have Nikki, we have Mark, we have Kim, and we need to support them. So three cheers for you. And I can't wait for next week. Oh, Who knows be big. where Who the knows? world will be. Oh, geez. But, but I know where I'll be. I'll be right here with exactly. you. Exactly. You'll be right here. Thank you so much, John. Around the political world, make sure you find it on your podcasts. Uh, thank you, John. We'll talk next week. Bye. Good.